hello and welcome again to our Lenten devotions for the year 2022. This is for Friday, March 18th, and we're looking at Psalm 37. I had originally intended simply to look at the first few verses of Psalm 37, but I, after I studied a little more, I thought we really need to hear the whole psalm. It is listed as a psalm of David. It is an alphabetic acrostic psalm. That is, in Hebrew, each verse begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is why it takes a little while to, why there are several verses in this psalm. So we're going to read the, the psalm in its entirety. It's a little longer than the ones we've been uh, looking at, but I think it's important to read it. Psalm 37. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of evildoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to kill those who walk uprightly. Their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. Better is a little that the righteous person has than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will abide forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. But the wicked perish, and the enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. The wicked borrow and do not pay back. But the righteous are generous and keep giving. For those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land. But those cursed by him shall be cut off. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong. For the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are ever giving liberally and lending and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their power or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep to his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the destruction of the wicked. I have seen the wicked oppressing and towering like a cedar of Lebanon. Again, I passed by and they were no more. Though I sought them, they could not be found. Mark the blameless and behold the upright for there is posterity for the peaceable, but transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. <coughs> he rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Kind of a long reading of Psalm 37 because it was written 
as an acrostic psalm. Uh, it's good to get all the way through the alphabet, even though we don't have the Hebrew alphabet here before us. But even more than that, the psalm sort of needs all of its verses to, to get its point across. And there are different uh, interpretations of this psalm. One is that, that it's, um, it's a call to action and uh, not to worry. Um, and that it's general and kind of metaphorical about the, about the meek inheriting the land. We hear that in other places too, don't we? Or about, the, uh, about those who are, do not have now who will be having later. So there are those who see it kind of more metaphorically and there are those who see it more intentionally to, as a psalm to those who are oppressed and those who have lost their land and those who have suffered under injustice and to give them a sense of what will happen as they trust in the Lord. Uh, because it says, don't fret because of the wicked. It's not, a, it's not we're not, to, not worrying about particular things. It's worrying about the wicked. Those who seem to prosper when the righteous do not prosper. And those who don't have any cares while the righteous uh, aren't sure about where they are getting their next meal sometimes, or those who have been pushed off the land. So it, here there is an alternative way of being offered up, an alternative to the wicked who take what they can whenever they can, those who live by the sword, those who live by the um, putting their thumb on the scale, those who live by cheating and deceit, and violence, but here the psalm offers another way, and it is throughout the psalm where it picks up the ways to combat this, this state of affairs. Uh, the first is not to fret about it, to trust in the Lord, to trust in the Lord and do good. And then there are a couple of different translations about the next part of verse three. Trust in the Lord and do good. And what we read in the NRSV is, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. But one commentator who sees this as a psalm for those who are farmers who have lost their land, translates it this way. Trust in the Lord and do good. Settle the land and graze on faith. What an what a metaphor, what an image to graze on faith and to build up the kind of life that resists the violence of the times. And what are the, the things that go into that kind of life? Well, first of all, we have just read it in verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. It's a call to action, not needless worry, but action. The second one we see uh, farther down to live simply. Better is the little that the righteous have than the abundance of the evil. To do good and to live simply. And then farther down in verses 30 and 31, to proclaim justice. So we, here we have a call to action, not simply a, a call to be comforted or to wait on the Lord in the sense of, well, we'll just wait and then finally the Lord will will uh, vindicate us, but that sense that we live the kinds of lives that are their own reward and that will indeed eventually prevail. Sloan, William Sloan, Sloan Coffin, some of you may know him, uh, wrote this about, not about this Psalm particularly, but about hope, which is throughout the Psalm. And often the word translated, wait for the hope, wait for the Lord has in it that, that German, that word hope. He says, hope, criticizes what is. Hopelessness rationalizes it. Hope resists. Hopelessness adopts. And so here we have a psalm to resist. Not to resist the violence against violence, but to resist with goodness, to resist with simple living, to resist with generosity, to resist with proclaiming justice. And that kind of action is what also keeps us from worrying. Not that worrying it by itself does not us get us anywhere. As matter of fact says, worrying brings on evil. But righteous action 
and waiting on the Lord and trusting that this righteous action will be efficacious is what will bring us to the land that God has promised, to the land of justice and harmony and peace. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this psalm. You know how easy it is for us to fret about how evildoers in this world are seem to have the upper hand so often and how hard it is for us to keep from worrying. We pray, Lord, that we will take this psalm as a, as a call to action for us, as an outline for how we live righteously and justly and so that we may, in the face of evil, live in a way that brings about your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for this time together, and we pray that we may live lives of justice and righteousness, generosity and simplicity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this lesson today.